everybody, and welcome to another video covering the Enhanced Edition mod. Finishing up the last of the Champion Overhaul, and this will also be the last of my coverage for this mod, at least for a little bit. I'm going to go back to my regular stuff, finishing up the Let's Play. Once um, a bit more content in terms of more overhauls and stuff have been put out, I'm definitely going to come back to this. It's been a lot of fun experimenting with these characters. But I figured Sir K would be a good note to go out on, because he's a bit more representative of the champions as a whole. He does have a couple things unique to him, such as Death Strike, Kick, and even has a unique passive, I think, in his Tier 3. But he's definitely more similar to the generic champions, so this will be, I think, enough to show off what they kind of got going on. While still having a somewhat unique experience to him that I think will be pretty appealing to a number of players that are considering playing with this mod. Two things that are different from the Black Knight and White Knight is he does actually have the ability to switch between defensive stance and offensive stance with the two abilities, parry and repost and lunge. This is something the generic champions have that the previous two I showed did not, and other than that, he still has his death strike in tier 1, and everything else is about the same. The upgrades on the offensive and defensive stance, I do kind of want to show these off a little bit. I just took upgrades increasing their damage making it so offensive stance actually gets some extra bonus damage and some extra defensive bonuses when I'm using defensive stance. Now in tier 2, he no longer has kick here. That got moved to tier 3, which kind of makes sense. Kick is a very strong move. But he does have power attack now, so you can kind of switch between the two. If they have armor, he can power attack. If they don't have armor, he can death strike. And I think that's honestly some pretty good versatility there. Taking vengeance as usual. And then kick is pretty much the exact same, I think. Just the base AP cost is higher, so now it's 3 with the AP reduction. Has knee breaker. Damage focus. Damage focus does have a rework coming to make it not quite as strong because the AP pools are larger. Damage focus is a little kind of overpowered at the moment. But he did give me a uh, sort of sneak peek at the changes he had in mind. It's still going to be a significant damage boost. It just won't be like 90% off of this larger AP pool now. He does also have coup de gras, so of course we're taking that, and he'll be able to actually set it up a bit easier now for himself because he does have kick, a much cheaper knockdown. And he has reckless strikes. This gives it so all of his basic attacks and opportunity attacks cleave. This obviously can hurt your allies as well, so you need to be a little careful with it, but... Just having AoE on all basic strikes in instead of having actual cleave himself or whirlwind like a lot of the other champions have had. I think this is an interesting ability and I'm pretty interested to see how this will play out. That's it for him though. Let's just go ahead and get into some fights and you can see all of this in action. The gear is the standard stuff that I've been running so far. So that means he'll have no calling hits ability unless I'm using the... Death Strike here, it has the Execute upgrade for and a built-in cooling hits. So I'm doing the Warlord again, just like I did with the Black Knight, so we'll have a little bit of side-to-side -side comparison even. And I figured this would be a good mission for this, to show off the Reckless a bit more, since I won't have to deal with the reanimation, and I mean, I guess I could have used the other item to have the cooling hits, but I just decided to go with this one. Um... We're going to uh, just kind of do the same thing as last time. We have even less mobility uh, without, you know, jumping attacks. So we're just going to just move, like, here for now. And we will get an extra AP boost next turn because we do have damage focus. But we're going to have to actually manually run that distance. All right, that's a really nice grouping right there. So let's go ahead and pop Divine Favor and get K in there. Let's see, what's our AP pool here? 22. That's a good amount. All right, we can immediately see the uh, cleave here. Let's go ahead and open with a power attack. Not quite enough to kill, so let's do a little softening. Now it's enough to kill. Nice. You can see so much damage getting spread around. Let's fine move here. We can get another. 
We didn't activate either of our stances. I forgot about that, but that's actually okay, I think. Let's take some hits, burn through some of our health a little bit, get Vengeance popping up. But some pretty good clearing right here with this group of enemies. And then... Actually... Kick actually isn't enough, dang. Um... Well, how about this? Nice. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Pretty good opener. All right. Went through a good amount of HP, but that means we have a big vengeance boost here. Now we're going to use lunge. Does give us a little bit of mobility, two to three range. So we can use this to cross this distance. Cool. Um, not, I don't have enough movement to get to here to try and get a double, but if we just do a little bit of softening at least, I think we can finish off the beast man. All right, move here. We do have offensive stance up, so we do take a bit more damage, but deal a decent amount more as well. Um, we can just kill off this work, I guess. Let's move you up to here. And just a little love tap. Okay, so here we're in the second fight. K got the shit CC'd out of him, so nothing really happened in the first couple turns. Figured now's a good point to probably cut in. Um, he's up now, and we're gonna just start going after the enemies. We have a bunch of wargs grouped up here, so I think that's what we're gonna aim for. If we... We definitely want to break this ice wall, though, that I set up earlier. I think between the Fire Blast and the Earthsmith Ring, that should clear the way. Nice. And we can just move up to here. The cleave doesn't quite reach him. Is it because of my positioning? It is. Alright. It's a pretty good multi right there. Let's move up to here. Coup de Gras is not going to do much on you, but Death Strike? Eh, also not quite. Forgot to use Divine Favor. Um, looks like we lost our offensive stance, so let's go ahead and get that back up, actually. And we'll just land a hit like there. Next turn, I think we'll be able to clean up quite a bit. All right, that's actually perfect. That gives us a lot more fodder to just feed off of here. Whirlwind would have been so nice right now, but we'll make do. Very nice. Just, it's awesome seeing so much damage numbers pop up just from all of these different swings because of that Reckless. It's pretty cool. Then We're able to, and it also really enables a lot more combo like chain kills I've noticed too. Because you notice how I hit that Shaman, but the AoE, the Reckless, killed the Taint Hog next to him. Which gave us another free second swing on the same target. That's very strong. Since we're being able to get two attacks on one target for the price of one, as opposed to two attacks on two separate targets, with good positioning, it really boosts your single target damage. Can't quite get both of these. I can get two swings in, I think, because it's five AP per swing. I have ten. Um, I think I can enable this a little bit more. Nice. We're looking good. I 
All right. He did knock us away and down, but we do have our lunge here to get right back in. And let's actually switch to defensive stance. We're getting a little lower on armor. We have zero HP. I'm curious to see how much damage we're going to take now with defensive stance up in comparison. All right. We actually got a block proc off. We took no damage, I think. Defensive stance pretty strong. We are immune to an opportunity attack as well. But yeah, let's go ahead and get the kill here. Don't need the offensive stance for that. I think we can move to here. Earthsmith bring this, get a free swing. Let's finish you off. And then let's just finish off this last warg. All right. That was, for the most part, almost entirely an offensive stance. Got some really good look at his damage numbers. I'm going to do one more quick fight or at least part of one i really want to see how much tankiness now we can get out of this defensive stance because he took maybe i think he already had 98 vitality right going into that turn where he got then attacked by that taint hog i think he took like no damage from it which is pretty crazy all right for this one we're just gonna put k over here and just have him hold off this side because i really want to test his tankiness really with this defensive stance because i mean 30 percent damage resistance he does less damage so that's okay and he'll just get some extra armor and let's just overwatch for now and we'll have everyone else focus on the few wargs that are over here Okay, yeah, he's taking no damage. That's pretty cool. Free swing. Um, We'll have K venture into here. He'll take on these guys. He continues to take no damage. That's that's strong. <laughs> and we have zero HP, so we're getting the full vengeance buff. And that 33% is definitely... I mean, it's more than the 20% penalty we're taking, so... We're still netting higher damage than standard. And also taking, like, no damage at the same time. That's really good. Just go ahead and get some cleaves in. Nice. Sure, let's kick him, why not? Okay, that's a very solid performance. I'm... Defensive stance, honestly, stronger than I was expecting. And I didn't think it was going to be weak either, but it is quite powerful. And that's everything I think I need to show off with Sir K. Being able to have access to both of the stances was a bit more refreshing coming off of the other two who didn't really have them, at least in the same way as the rest of the champs are going to have. 
the standout to me is easily the Reckless Strikes. This is a very strong ability, and I think it's really cool. As I kind of mentioned earlier, the ability to, with good positioning, be able to get two swings on one target for the price of one, that is very strong. And definitely one of the stronger abilities that I've seen out of all of the champions reworked so far. So, very, very big fan of that. And what actually turned out to be a bit of a surprise standout to me was defensive stance. This is a very strong defensive ability. I mean, just reading the effects, you can tell how strong it is already. Regaining armor, mid-combat, that's very good. Reducing armor loss. And, I mean, you could stack that then again with another hardened armor for 30% bonus. And just the flat damage reduction here of the uh, 30%. That's very good and i mean especially being able to combo that with vengeance you know with like what i did here in an earlier fight kind of lead with offense get your hp super low switch to defense and you'll start taking very negligible damage i mean i was taking none from several targets at once and you'll still be netting positive damage over zero flat stance so that's a pretty good combo there and i think having champions with this defensive stance really opens up a bit more team comp possibilities especially if you're going old faith where you have a lot less defenders to pick from where now you don't necessarily feel like maybe you need a defender to act as a brick wall for your party with defensive stance it seems like a champion can do a really good job of that as well they won't be able to like taunt nearly as well for example or provide armor to allies with something like guard not as much battlefield control to mitigate the enemies like mordred but if you just want a brick wall this definitely seems like a viable option and I think with that, I have said everything that I wanted to say. This mod has been a lot of fun playing around with so far. I highly, highly recommend you check it out if you've finished at least one playthrough. The mod creator, Caron, is doing a lot of good work with it, putting a lot of effort into it. And the mod itself is done in terms of reworking the game systems, so you don't need to wait for all these different hero overhauls you know these character overhauls this is kind of like bonus content there's still system changes dots debuffs the ap pool ap costs they've all been readjusted some minor tweaks to certain abilities so you will still definitely get a different experience but these hero overhauls definitely have been the spotlight for me personally and i think really helped change up the gameplay a lot it's really, really good. I'm definitely going to be circling back to this in the future. But for now, this is it for my coverage of Enhanced Edition. If you made it all the way to the end, I do appreciate it, and I hope to see you in the next one.